Uh, let's go to the tail of the tape. Yeah, quickly, our tail of the tape brought to you by Live Oak, a Texas vodka. The 34-year-old Sean Kennard making his pro debut, even on the height, uh, even on the height two-inch reach advantage for Sean Kennard. Let's get inside the cage for our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by Live Oak Vodka is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC middleweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands six feet tall and he weighed in officially at 181.8 pounds. Fighting out of Dallas, Texas, today he looks for his first win as a pro. This is the Wolfman. Garrett Foster! And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands six feet tall, and he weighed in at 188.2 pounds. Fighting out of the Woodlands, Texas, today he makes his professional debut. This is Top Gun, Sean. Kennard! Your referee in charge of the action, Patrick Patlon. All right, got a little treat here. The Texas Zombie, Cody Owens, joining us here for the broadcast. You usually hear him on Fury Challenger Series broadcast and all of our amateur cards as well. Cody, welcome in, man. How you been? I'm great, guys. Thanks for having me on the broadcast today. Special little uh, treat just got here, and uh, I get to call some fights, so I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, it's special guest here. Special guest day here at uh, Fury Fighting yeah. Championships. We have Richard Burmaster, now Cody Owens. By the way, blue gloves for Garrett Foster, the Wolfman, red for Sean Kennard. Fight Clock brought to you by OnlyFans. Kennard making that debut, finally had the herniated disc earlier in his career as well, has worked so hard to get to this debut, had a really fun amateur career as well. Here the corner over there, the, the great Alex Morono, which I'm sure he'll be uh, in the broadcast booth kicking me out very shortly <laughs> to take over. But his guy in the cage right now doing some great clinch work. Like to see some head position change there to really be able to dominate the position even a little bit better. Yeah, Garrett Foster standing a little tall. I don't think he's fighting hard enough for that underhook on the right side there. He's to push that arm through and get his get you know change the head change the side like you said, Cody. Change the head position. He needs to get a little lower. At least Sean is lower than you know he's able to get underneath the uh, the weight of Garrett Foster. Right, you see so, Cody, by the way, ladies yeah. everyone, Cody. Yeah, the the Fury broadcast just got better looking. Cody Owens over <laughs> Let's here. Go. You see a little bit of a switch of position there for just a moment. Garrett was able to get the underhook and turn, but Sean still very persistent, keeping that clinch going. Yeah, Sean, a former SWAT officer, a firearms instructor. Uh, now, uh, you know, he's about to be doing some retreats. Ooh, big slam there from Sean Kennard. This is not a good situation. That's a big man to have on top of you inside control. He was setting that up for a while there. Yeah, we talked about Garrett Foster, you know, not, uh, you know, he's, he hasn't been able to win a fight yet in amateur or pro. Um, and you can see that he's got some technical gaps in his, in his game. Uh, just a little bit of positioning, uh, that he could improve very, very easily that, it, uh, he's either choosing not to do or he just doesn't, doesn't know how to do yet, but, you know, it's, uh, this is, Sean Kennard is, is a very technical grappler, very, very good fighter. And just as you say so there, he's able to transition to the back now, looking for the rear naked choke for sure. Got one in our beautiful position with the hips to, you know, to take the weight away from Garrett Foster. And once you get those hips in, you get him elevated, the toes off the ground, it's a pretty easy slam to the ground there. Foster doing a good job of getting his feet back under him really, really quick, but not in any better of a position here. Ready, go. 
Round two here, Foster, Kennard, Cody Owens, the Texas Zombie, joining us here for the broadcast for this fight. Alex Morono on assignment, right now working the corner for yeah, Kennard. You hear him right now, giving instructions out just as we're talking, giving Kennard a little bit of instruction. You see him in this back-mounted position, just kind of pounding away here at Foster, very similar to the first round. Yeah, both rounds are almost identical, and again... You know, Foster making some technical mistakes here on these escapes, and uh, I, I like Sean as has improved his position just a little bit uh, coming from the being on the side. Now taking the back straight on, got that one hook in. You know, going back, thinking about Sean's fights as an amateur, when he was in positions like this, he would always let those hands loose a little bit, and he would pepper in shots and make it hard. For his opponent to get comfortable, and we haven't seen too much of that just yet from Kennard. Yeah, you saw for a moment there he did have Foster flattened out, which is just an extremely uncomfortable position to find yourself in. It's kind of this sky ride position, skydiver position. You see him trying to do the right thing and turn back in now, but Kennard just, you're talking about that, pa that power he has. Looking to see, go, going for a choke here it seems, but not quite sure if he's under the chin. Uh, looks like it's... A little bit outside, oh. working its way across, but good head turn there from Foster. Gets out of a rough position for the choke, at least, but still has top gun on his back. Yeah, the one thing Foster is is explosive. He does make those explosive movements well, and, you know, that's what, uh, that's the only time he's been able to get Kennard out of position is he explodes a little faster than Kennard can transition. And so that's that's been his kind of ace in the hole so far. Uh, it's not something you can really depend on when you can't stay out of the positions. Because, again, you know, you're surviving, but you're not winning this fight. Yeah, a testament to his defense for sure. You know, being able to get out of some of these deep submissions. That one we just saw underneath the chin for a moment there. But able to move and, and get out of it. But like Raheel said earlier, it's not going to win fights. It's not going to get the job done. We, we have to... Look for something more. Back on the feet now and looking for Ooh, some big, big bombs. Right. But here we are again. Ever familiar position. We've got Kennard on top, you know, just pounding away a little ground and pound. Yeah, let's see how the guard is here of, of Garrett Foster. I think the first time he's been stuck in his guard. I'm not sure what kind of jiu-jitsu chops he has from here. And Kennard with a little opportunity to do some ground and pound here. Yeah, looked to run away there, but Kennard immediately saw the back and took it. Yeah, that's that spot where you, if you're going to try to stand up, you have to do a technical stand up. You got to stay facing your opponent. You cannot turn your back and try to just outrun him to the cage because Kennard was ready for that. And as soon as he saw him go to his hip, he attacked again, back to side control, and now to the back, and immediately goes to doing damage here from the back. Also, mouthpiece there for a second. Looks like Kennard kind of let him put it back in. <laughs> See if Kennard rips back here or yeah. flattens out. Good flat. And you see the explosive movements of Foster are effective for, you know, for survival. Um, but, you know, Kennard continuing to ride this out. You really want to see Kennard. That like, explosive hands, right? Yeah, like, yeah we, we've seen him before, yeah. particularly in his amateur career, in this position and just explode with some ground to pound, 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds worth of that, uh, or 20 strikes worth of that, rather. And the referee's going to come in and stop this fight, but you don't see him really adamant to yeah. go for that. So, I mean, he's peppering in shots, Michael, but not yeah, the I think power. He has so much power in those hands. I just think he's just afraid that you know Foster has been explosive in his escapes. I think it feels as soon as he's, he makes some distance, he feels like Foster's going to explode just again and just kind of lose his position. So, you know, he's doing the right thing. He's winning the fight, and he's getting into position to win the fight. I think he's up two rounds to none pretty easily. Yeah, you're right, Mike. I think it comes to a, 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 a mental where you have to go, okay, I'm not exactly going down the avenue I'd like to. I have to take what's available to me. Yeah, and you see, I mean, you can see the strength difference here uh, for one. Uh, but, you know, explosiveness and quickness, uh, you know, I'd have to give that to Foster, but he's not really using it for anything except for to kind of survive. Kennard has been on him the entire time. It's been this. There's been no distance between him and Kennard, and Kennard in offensive positions and Foster in defensive positions, and that has to change. He's got to let it all hang out here. His coaches have to be telling him you're down two rounds to none. 
and he's just got to let it go here. He's got to let his hands go, and, you know, Kennard, of course, is not going to let that happen. He's going to try not to let that happen. He's going to close the distance. He's going to get in there and try to get that, get his his arms around him, and once he does, he's going to go back to the mat, and so we, yeah. that's what Foster has to avoid. All right, final round, third fight of our prelims broadcast. Yeah, you'd have to think that Foster had his coaches gave him some sense of urgency coming out in his third round. We'll have to see what he's able to put together. But as you were saying, Mike, if he keeps doing what he's doing, Kennard's going to go right back to the well and keep doing exactly what he's done, and he'll get a decision victory here, if not a, a TKO vi victory along the way. Yeah, it looks like Foster all of a sudden has changed his fighting style for the third round. Yeah. He's gone to a more karate, Leoto Machida style here. Yeah, good bounce in his step. Oh, but good. Kennard oh, having man. none of it. And Kennard again trying to put some pressure on Foster. Up against the cage, holding that hand, that right hand. Foster not really fighting hard. He's fighting hard for the underhook, but just to get it down to his waist, he's got to fight really, really hard to change the direction. A couple dirty little knees in here to the thighs. These things can be effective for setting up trips, but also very aggravating to the thigh, to the quad. Yeah, and this is the part where he's got an underhook, he needs to squat down, get a little more weight underneath Sean Kennard. If he wants to either get some separation or if he wants to initiate a takedown himself. Sean Kennard with another outside trip, takedown. Right in the half guard, up on top. Yeah, there's the eventuality you talked about. Eventually we find ourselves in this position. Here we are once more. Three minutes left in the third round. Yeah, and this is a good ground and pound position. Sean deciding he'd rather change position here. Looks like he wants to get to side control again or maybe to the mount. I'm throwing a lot of punches from here. He's just got to be a, be careful. He's giving him a little bit of space there. There you go. Now, now right was just sitting there, ribs open. Yeah, now this is not good for Garrett Foster. Yeah, looks like a little head and arm submission being set up here yeah those big shoulders and big arms and that weight of of sean Kennard is about to be pushing down on the chin and neck if he can change sides it's much more effective you can finish this from the mound but it's very effective from side control he's trying to on get that, that side he's got the lockdown yeah. which is the right thing to do there but there it goes now he's able to cut oh. that knee through he passed back over to the mound Soften him up a little bit with some right hands, but maybe losing the choke in the process. And there's that explosiveness of, of Foster again. Yeah, got to give him his credit. Definitely not accepting any of these positions. Kennard just all over him now on the back once more, looking for that choke again. Yeah, Kennard needs to pull those heels back and push those hips forward. Make this as uncomfortable as possible. That is under oh, the chin. That That's very good. tight. This, could this be is going to be a finish. Palm to palm here. This is that it. Is. That's it. John Kennard gets the tap in round three. What a debut win for Sean Kennard. Our first finish of the night here at Fury FC 80. And man, Garrett Foster did everything he could to survive some tough positions, Cody, but yeah. eventually it was just too much. Yeah, Kennard just with a relentless onslaught of pressure, some grounded pound, was able to get a few different rear naked choke attempts sunk in there, got under the chin a couple times. That third time right there eventually was the one that got the job done. He got underneath the chin, was able to get palm to palm to create the necessary leverage and get the finish. Take a look at our highlights for round three. We'll get a look at the finish as well. But it really was opened up, Cody, by those 
shots. He was actually punching, softened up Garrett, and eventually that right elbow and forearm snuck in, and it was in deep. See the there tap. Is, yep. Congratulations. Let's make this thing official. Here's Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes three minutes, 40 seconds into the third and final round. Declaring a winner by tap out to a rear naked choke. Top Gun, Sean Kennard. Top Gun getting the job done here, picking up uh, his first professional victory, for his first professional finish. I'm here with the winner, Sean Kennard. Sean, a beautiful debut. A rear naked choke finish. Were you surprised at how explosive he was from those positions from the bottom for you not to be able to do that earlier in the fight? Yeah, I was. He, he's a tough dude. I mean, honestly, um, this is our, our game plan. You know, I'm just going to Alex Morano. We, we body lock ride till the day's done. And, and he was tough, man. He, I didn't expect him to hang on that long. I'll be honest. Yeah, I trained with Team Alex Morono yesterday, and I know all about that body lock ride. But it was a beautiful finish, a much-anticipated debut. We loved seeing you in there. You were the amateur champion. What do you want next from Fury Fighting Championships? Man, I'm thankful to be here. You know, this is a great organization, so I, I feel blessed to be able to fight for you guys. And, uh, you know, I, I know we're supposed to, you know, Dana White says, keep God out of your post-victory uh, speech. But I, I wouldn't be here if the Lord didn't make me a dangerous man. And of course, all my fans, my beautiful wife, my kids, man. I, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. And I'm thankful to be here. So what I'm looking for is more fights. Well, we're thankful to have you here, Sean, and we can't wait to see you again. Congratulations on the victory. Your winner, Sean Top Gun Canard.